Hello. In this video, I'd like to give another demonstration for the differences between inheritance of an abstract class and inheritance using an interface. So we're going to create a simple video game that will show us the difference between these and how you might uh, apply them to other situations. So let's make a project together, and then you can see exactly what I mean. So I'm going to go to File and choose New Project here in my Eclipse workspace. So I'm going to call my uh, project video game, and you can see I'm using Java 1.8 here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is an abstract class. So let's go to the uh, folder, right-click on the source area, and choose New Class. So if I were to create a video game, I might create a generic object called Game Object, and it's going to be abstract. So let's go ahead and check this. So you can see that when I checked the abstract class, all it did was put the word abstract in. Don't worry, if you forgot to put that in, you can just type it in now. All right, so what's a game object have for properties? So let's think of the uh, properties for its location. So let's just say that all objects in my game are going to have the coordinates of x, y. That sounds pretty reasonable. So for my game object, I'm going to create a new uh, getter and setter. So let's go to Source, choose Generate Getters and Setters select everything and click OK. So I've got getters and setters. Let's go ahead and create a constructor as well. So I'll right click, choose source, and generate constructors using fields. And let's see, the fields are checked as X and Y, so I click OK. So you can see now I have a constructor and I have the getters and setters. Let's go ahead and save the work. Alright, so think of the game now as asteroids. Asteroids has three different kind of objects. They have your player, they have the enemy spaceship, the UFO, and then they have the rocks. So those are all game objects. They all have an X and Y coordinate. But they have differences. So let's go ahead and make some new objects that would be a uh, reference to those. So the first object I'm going to create is the spaceship. Now I could just go ahead and choose finish and then add to it. Now I want my spaceship to extend the uh, object called game object. Okay, so now spaceship should have a constructor. Let's go ahead and choose that. So you can see the constructor for the spaceship now has an X and Y coordinate. So now let's create some properties for it. So I'm just going to invent two properties. I'm going to have one called bullets and the other one called can fire. Let's add a, a couple of getters and setters here. So I'll go source and choose generate getters and setters. Select all and choose OK. So now we have our example of a spaceship that inherits the properties X and Y from its, prop, from its parent, but it has some custom things for bullets and firing. All right, so I'm going to create a method for shoot the gun. So it's a, it's a spaceship. It has a gun on it. And in my text version of my app, I can only do printing. So I'm going to say, shoot the laser, pew, pew, pew. All right, so that's an example of a thing that is inherited using an abstract class. Now I'm going to test this out. I'm going to go create a new class that is my main program. And since it's the main program, it needs a public static void main. And let's go ahead and choose finish. All right, I'm going to create a new spaceship called me, and I want to use the constructor for spaceship. You can see that we have a problem, though. It says, I don't like the constructor that you chose. It has to have something that uses an int and int. So let's go ahead and put two variables in there. Let's uh, put them at uh, location at 100, 200 on my map. Now, I should be able to have the method called shoot the gun, right? Yep, there it is, shoot gun. And if I run the program, I should see something like pew, pew, pew on the screen. And there it is, shooting the laser. All right, so there is an example of one item that is inherited from its parent. I'd like to show the location of my spaceship now. So I would like to put in the system out print line and say I am at, and then put in my coordinates, so me.x and me.y. As you can see, I have some syntax errors. They don't quite work yet, so it looks like the first thing I forgot to do was put a concatenation plus sign in there. And now I can't access the X and Y coordinates directly. I have to create the get and the setters, right? So let's see, go me.get 
x, and there it is. And the next one is going to be me.getY. So now let's run those and see if I can see the uh, coordinates of my spaceship. All right, so the next example I'd like to do is create an enemy. So the enemy is also going to be an extension of the game object. And it says since you're using the, uh, that as your pattern, you're going to have to add the constructor. So as you remember in the uh, game of asteroids, there's two different kinds of UFOs. There's the small guy and the large guy, and they both make different sounds and travel at different speeds. So we'll create a private int size as my property. I'm going to generate the getter and setter for this guy and click OK. So for right now, let's just leave the UFO as that. The point of this video is to show some demonstrations that contrast abstract classes from interfaces. And so we're still building abstract ones, but we're coming up to the interfaces real soon. Lastly, I'm going to create a class called Rock. So this is the big boulders that drift around. See if you can do it. I want to create a rock that extends from the game object and the rock should have a uh, mass, let's say. How big is this rock? And that could be an integer property. Go ahead and try to encode that, and then I'll code it in just a minute. Okay, welcome back. I'm going to code now the rock and see if you coded the same thing. So first of all, I extend the rock with a game object. Now it says here, I need to have a constructor. Then lastly, let's give it a property. It will also have a size. Let's call this thing mass, just so it's distinguished between the size of the UFO and the mass of the rock. All right, so now I'm going to generate a cons uh, the uh, getters and setters. All right, so you should have something like that. We have a game object, and it is uh, called a rock. It has a mass, and we have a getter and setter. So now what we're trying to teach here is the difference between an interface and an abstract class because they're easy to confuse. So as you can see that everything I've created on the game so far has used the word extends and it extends from the game object. Now I'm going to use an interface now and show you that you can use multiple interfaces on an object but you can't use multiple uh, parents for an abstract class. So let's create a new interface. So I'm going to go, instead of choosing class, I'm going to choose the word interface. Now the interface that we're going to make is called uh, can move, how about? Or we could call it movable. Let's do that. All right, so what did this do differently than a regular class? It's really not much different except for the word interface here. So what can we do in movable? So let's say I want to be a movable object, and uh, the first thing you have to think about is, well, it has a speed, right? And we can change speed. So I'll create a method called accelerate, and we'll accelerate to a new speed. Now let's go look at some things that are movable. So I think that my uh, spaceship is movable. So let's go into the spaceship, and I'm going to add the word implements now. Implements movable. Now, I've got myself a problem here. It says, in Spaceship, it says you have an unimplemented method. Let's go ahead and add that. And down at the bottom, you can see that there is a new uh, property called Accelerate2. So that means that the spaceship is movable. Let's also say that the um, enemy UFO is movable. So let's see if you can do this. Can you make the uh, enemy UFO a, uh, an extension or um, an implementation, I should say, of a movable object. So here's how it's supposed to be. You're going to say implements, and then you type in the word move a bolt. Then it says here under the error that you cannot use the movable object unless you add the unimplemented methods, and accelerate is at the bottom. For right now, let's say our rocks are going to be stationary, so we'll leave those alone. You can add movable if you want. Well, here's the difference that you see in a um, class that extends versus a class that implements, we can implement more than one interface. All right, so now I'm going to think about things that can explode in this game. Well, actually, probably everything can explode, but I'm going to say that the rock can explode and the uh, spaceship can explode. So let's go ahead and add those. So explodable is my keyword. 
and we need a method for explodable. All right, so now when we go to our spaceship, let's go ahead and add a new item. We're gonna call this thing explodable. All right, the spaceship needs to explode. So what does that look like? We'll add the unimpl unimplemented method. And for when the spaceship explodes, we'll put a message out. So for the spaceship message, I'm going to say, Kapow! You just blew up. So that is the version of explode that the spaceship can do. What else can explode? Let's say the rock can explode. So let's go into rock or enemy. Let's see which one. We'll make them both explode, how about? So for right now, we're gonna do rock first. So let's go ahead and put in here uh, some keywords. So I'm gonna pause here and let you see if you can do it. Can you make the rock explodable? So here's what you do. You have to type in the word implements and then the word explodable. Okay, and you can see then we have an error over rock that says you need to add the unimplemented methods. So what do we do for a rock? Okay, for my rock explosion, I'm going to say smithereens. The rock is a cloud of gravel. All right, so the last homework is to make the UFO explodable as well. So you decide what it's going to look like. I'll code it now, and so you can use my example if you like. Otherwise, stop the video and do it yourself. So for enemy UFO, if I want to make it explodable, I put a comma and explodable after the word movable. Then I generate the unimplemented methods and then type in a message. Okay, for the UFO, I'm going to say pop. The UFO is gone. Okay, so make some observations here about what we did. We have an extension of two different types. In the example here, the enemy UFO seems to work. The U enemy UFO is a child of the game object, and so we extend an abstract class. Now, if we want to have multiple interfaces, we can implement and then add a list of them with commas between them. And so you can see that they're related because they both come from a parent class. They're different because the game object is actually a, an object that has methods that are implemented, and then the, uh, the uh, interfaces, they just have a list of things that you're supposed to make. So you notice that there is no code here for telling us what the accelerate looks like, but when we come to the um, game object, we should, uh, if we created methods, we would actually have code form. So there's a contrast for you between interfaces and abstract classes. So good luck with your Java programming.